Let's watch the full video in its entirety. Let's gather the full context of the story. After the video, please comment down below your thoughts, your comments, and your perspectives. Let me know what you guys think. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel and turn post notifications on. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you so much for supporting the truth. Let's get right into it. This is Michael Popak with Illegal AF Hot Take. Do you know who is one of the most indicted people in the Georgia election interference case? If you thought Donald Trump, you'd be wrong by at least two. Kathy Latham, former head of the uh, GOP, the MAGA Republican Party in Coffee County, Georgia, has 12 different counts against her. And she decided she was going to try to move to dismiss the main, the heart of the counts against her for criminal RICO, racketeering and conspiracy. And she had a unique argument. She said, I didn't lie in state court. I lied in federal court. And you can't get me for perjury in state court under Georgia law. You can only get me in federal court for federal perjury. Yep, that's right. In order to make her argument, Kathy Latham, um, in making her motion to dismiss or demure part of the indictment, as they like to say in Georgia, had to tell Judge McAfee that uh, I might have committed perjury. Let's assume that I did, but I did it in a federal proceeding. And I'll talk about the deposition that we're talking about under oath where she lied. Um, and had to face uh, the fact that there was video surveillance footage that showed that she was lying. She just didn't realize that it had captured all of her activity. She was busy taking selfies with the um, uh, outside consultants hired by the Trump campaign to break into Coffee County's voting machines that were um, owned by Dominion voting machines with voting data belonging to you and me and download it <laughs> and steal it. Uh, and along with the cyber ninjas, I'm not making it up. We have a photo of Kathy Latham then taking photos with um, one of the uh, one of the forensic examiners that were hired by the Trump campaign. They then took that data, manipulated it, and tried to use it for their own purposes, all in violation of state and federal law. Kathy Latham is not just the um, one of the most indicted people in Georgia. And now having got on the wrong side of Judge McAfee, who denied her motion today because he found her entire argument that if you commit federal, if you commit perjury, lying under oath in a federal proceeding, you could only be prosecuted in a federal court. He said, well, first of all, if you look at the indictment against you, you're not being indicted for perjury per se. It's part of an, it's part of the bad acts that you did, which formed the conspiracy, but it's not the thing at the heart of your indictment. In fact, if you want to go to the heart of her indictment, she's she is um, here are the twelve counts uh, because she's also a fake elector. Uh, she met on December the fourteenth, twenty twenty, in the Georgia Capitol along with other people and signed a fake certificate alleging that they were the true. Uh, electors for the state of Georgia, and they were casting their vote for Donald Trump. So count one is the violation of the Georgia RICO Act. This is the Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act that lies at the heart of the indictment. Donald Trump also um, has been um, indicted for that. Eight, Count eight, impersonating a public officer. That's her fake elector status. Ten, forgery in the first degree. That's the certificate that she signed because they they brought receipts to their to their fraud. Twelve false statements and writings. That's mainly the fake electors. Fourteen criminal attempt to commit filing false documents because these yahoos tried to actually file these fake certificates with various entities, including the National Archive, a federal judge in Georgia, and then try to send it in to to Mike Pence to be counted on on the uh, on the Congress floor. Count 32, conspiracy to commit election fraud. That's what it sounds like. And then another count for that in 33. 34 count is the conspiracy to commit computer theft. That's her opening the door and allowing cyber ninjas and a company called Sullivan Strickland to come into Coffee County and break into the Dominion voting machines. Uh, that's count 34. Count 35, conspiracy to commit computer trespass. That also relates to the Dominion voting machines that she allowed to be hacked. 36, conspiracy to commit computer invasion of privacy because that data on there didn't belong to her, it belonged to the voters. And count 37, conspiracy to defraud the state. Now, Kathy Latham 
was deposed in a civil lawsuit brought in federal court by those who were challenging the voting machines that were being used in Georgia at the time. And at the time, without knowing that there was video surveillance footage, and we're going to show you a little bit of the video surveillance footage that we have, she actually said she couldn't remember, she didn't recall, she didn't remember meeting any of the people from Sullivan Strickland or from Cyber Ninja. She doesn't remember opening the door for them. She doesn't remember them going through any of the machines or her, them, her giving them uh, improper permission to hack the computers when all of this was in video surveillance photographs or otherwise. They actually found a card for cyber ninjas when the Georgia Bureau of Investigation went to Coffee County. They found a card, a business card that had been left behind next to one of the servers. So let's just say that Kathy Latham's goose was cooked. And so she lied, uh, perjured herself under oath in a federal proceeding, and that got mentioned in the indictment. Well, Kathy Latham didn't like that, and she wanted the court to just dismiss the indictment against her, including the racketeering count. And Judge McAfee, um, as as only he can, in a very short and sweet um, response in his decision, said as follows, and I'm going to read for it. We'll put it up on the screen. Judge said that, Defendant Latham challenges Act 160. That's the things we just talked about, about her lying under oath, about not knowing a darn thing about how those uh, hackers got into the Coffee County Election Office when she opened the door and let them in, invited them and gave them a cup of coffee and took a photo with them. He says that uh, she challenges Act 160 contained within count one of the indictment, uh, uh, arguing that her alleged conduct, uh, which is the perjury in the federal lawsuit, that was a civil lawsuit about um, uh, election fraud and voting machines. That that amounted to per that that could not uh, amount to perjury under Georgia law because it's barred by federal law. Um, the defendant ar the defendant's argument, the judge continues, relies uh, rests on the idea that only the federal government can punish someone for perjury committed in a federal court. Because when you give a deposition in a case, you're effectively giving sworn testimony in federal court because it's it's as if you're in court when you give that testimony. And the judge says, let me get this straight. You you think that when you commit federal per perjury in a federal matter, it can only be a matter for a federal court to decide on. Um, this means, the judge continued, according to the defendant, that because her allegedly false statements were made in, connect, in conjunction with a federal proceeding, the federal civil case I just told you about, the state cannot punish her for perjury in violation of Georgia law. And she cited a case. The court said the court finds, however, that that case in Ray uh, Loney, cited by the defendant, which is her only case that she cites, is inapplicable because the state has not substantively charged her with perjury. So she's not there on perjury. It's just that that's an overt act as part of the conspiracy for which she is charged. Nor has the defendant provided any authority subjecting overt acts to the pleading standard of uh, for a demure in the state of Georgia. In other words, it's just one of the acts. You're not being charged with perjury in Georgia. Um, and so as the judge reminded the lawyers for Kathy Latham, the reference to perjury in Act 160, which is one of the allegations of the indictment, identifies an overt act that the state claims the defendant committed in furtherance of the alleged RICO conspiracy charged in count one. But that critically, the overt act, this act of perjury in the other case, need, need not be a crime in and of itself. The motion to dismiss is denied. Uh, good day, sir. That was my addition to the judge. Um, he's just, Judge McAfee's just picking through all the remaining motions to dismisses, you know, the ones brought by, um, uh, the ones brought by Kathy Latham and Willie Floyd and uh, 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 Miss QT, K-U-T-I, uh, and others as he hopefully gets around to setting the case for trial. I mean, we, we give a lot of uh, understandable grief and blowback to Judge Cannon, a federal judge in the Mar-a-Lago case in Georgia, in Florida, because she has not set that case for trial. Judge McAfee hasn't set his case for trial either. And he's moving sort of slow through his motion practice too. Um, I understand that he didn't, he didn't necessarily appreciate uh, things that happened with the prosecutor and the person that she was dating, but I don't think that's any grounds now that he's allowed her to continue as a prosecutor uh, and absolved her of it. I don't think that's grounds for him to be dragging his feet. It's time for the American people to know when the trial of Donald Trump in Georgia is. If it's going to be before the election, we want to know that. If it's going to be after the election, we want to know that and why. 
if the um, if the judge isn't moving expeditiously through the motion practice, we want to know that as well. Public has a right. Public sits at the table along with the prosecutors and the defense because all of our trials in America are public. And the Speedy Trial Act and things related to a, a fair and impartial trial relate to um, the transparency that is given to the American people to be able to see on the record and for their own eyes what's transpiring in a trial. So a person is either convicted or exonerated uh, in the, under the watchful gaze of the American people. We can't do that if the trial isn't set. It's time. It's time, Judge McAfee, for you to set the trial date. Set it before um, the November election because it's important. Problem is, all these other cases have sort of jumped to the jumped in and taking uh, at, and have taken Judge McAfee's parking space. We've got a trial that starts on April the fifteenth against Donald Trump. That's going to go about six or eight weeks. That's the Stormy Daniels election interference uh, business fraud case. So let's just say that's April. And it's going to run till the beginning of June. Then, depending upon what happens with the uh, Supreme Court on April the 25th, in oral argument, the United States Supreme Court could ultimately allow Judge Chutkin in the federal D.C. election interference case to reset her trial. And then that would probably be sometime in August, July or August to conclude before the election. If that's going to happen, that's now exhausted all of the available trial dates for Donald Trump. And this trial uh, with McAfee probably won't be set until after the election. There goes that video there, guys. Please comment down below your thoughts, your comments, and your perspectives so we can all have an open dialogue in the comments and we can find the truth on these topics. Also, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and turn post notifications on. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you so much for supporting the truth. I really appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.